So I'm Taylor and I'm Sadie and we're going to teach you guys a little bit about interstitial lung disease. So what is interstitial lung disease? It's a large group of disorders characterized by progressive scarring of the lung tissue between and the supporting air sacs. The scarring may cause progressive lung stiffness, eventually affecting the ability to breathe and get enough oxygen into the bloodstream. ILD may be broadly categorized into known and unknown causes. Some of the known causes include autoimmune or rheumatologic diseases, occupational and organic exposures, medications, and radiations. Unknown causes, um, they're predominant by idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a specific and progressive fibrotic lung disease, followed by the idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, such as the nonspecific interstitial pneumonia and sarcoidosis. Symptoms of ILD, uh, their primary symptoms include a dry cough and a shortness of breath at rest or with exertion. By the time these symptoms occur, um, irrevers irreversible lung damage may have already occurred. So how does someone get ILD? This can occur when an injury to your lungs triggers an abnormal healing response. So the tissues around the alveoli become scarred and thickened, which makes it more difficult for oxygen to pass into your bloodstream. It can be triggered by many things, including autoimmune diseases, exposure to organic and inorganic agents in the home or workplace, medications, and some types of radiation. It can also be unknown. So some long-term exposure to a number of organic and inorganic materials and agents can damage your lungs and can result in ILD. These include asbestos fibers, which are found in old buildings, bird proteins, live pets and feather containing products, um, coal dust, so miners, grain dust, so for farmers, and mold from indoor hot tub showers and prior water damage. So if there's any big floodings and stuff like that, and also silica dust. So medications and radiation that can lead to interstitial lung disease. Um, so this can come from chemo and immunomodulating drugs such as methotrexate and cyc cyclophosphamide, some heart medications, and some antibiotics. So some medical conditions associated with ILD. So this lung damage with ILD can be associated with the following autoimmune diseases. So we have dermatomyositis, some mixed connective tissue diseases, pulmonary vasculitis, RA, sarcoidosis, sclerodema, systemic lupus, and then other connective tissue diseases. So how does interstitial lung disease affect someone? Depending on the severity, um, people are going to have troubles breathing. So if they have a little bit of scarring, the breathing will be bothered a little bit. But if there's a lot of scarring, these people are chronically going to be having problems breathing. And therefore, we will need to adjust their daily routines and activities. And especially as they worsen, we really need to watch that. Um, and emotionally and physically challenging um, interstitial lung disease can be on somebody. Um, we read a lot about people who have ILD um, eventually ending up with depression because they know that their days are limited and so forth. So the prevalence, one study that we read reported that 80.9 per 100,000 men and 67.2 per, per 100,000 women suffer um, interstitial disease in the United States and 31.5 of those 100,000 men per year and 26.1 new cases per 100,000 women per year are new and reoccurring every year. Um, obviously, according to those statistics, it is more prevalent in men than women, but um, pretty fairly close. And in the study, they also said that the most prevalent interstitial diseases included pulmonary brosis, occupational and environmental associated diseases, which Taylor said are usually um, farmers, coal miners, stuff like that, uh, connective tissue disease, associated interstitial disease, and sarcoidosis. Medications that are used to treat ILD, um, like Taylor said, just want you to keep in mind once lung scarring occurs, it is usually irreversible. There are some medications that can slow this damage, but the people will never regain full use of their lungs. Uh, the classes of drugs, or, yeah, the classes of drugs that are used for this are anti-inflammatories and anti-fibrotics. 
Um, people can also use oxygen therapy, and this just makes it easier to breathe and lowers all of the other things that come with it, improves sleep, and for a last resort, people who are not responding or having better quality of life with the previously listed treatments, uh, lung, transplant, lung transplants are available, but um, they can be hard to come by as the lung transplant waitlist can be fairly lengthy. So we looked at three different studies, and the first one, um, Holland and Hill looked to see if physical training was beneficial in people with interstitial lung disease because it is uh, beneficial in other chronic lung diseases. So it was a random controlled uh, trial, and they took one group of people with ILD, ILD that received physical training, and then the other group did not receive physical training. And they found that short-term people who did receive the physical training uh, showed major improvements in functional exercise capacity, dyspnea, and quality of life. The only bad thing about this study was that there was little evidence regarding the long-term effects. So as a PT, um, if you see a patient come in with ILD and you're worried about their physical training, short-term it is very beneficial and I'm sure there probably are other studies that we could look at to find out the longer-term effects. Um, as a PT, we thought these other two studies were kind of important. Um, according to Regu et al., interstitial lung disease is currently on the rise and is affecting more and more people. It used to be more of an environmental cause, um, like work, your workplace, farmers, coal miners, stuff like that. But now it's finding that there is an increase in the number of smokers, and that might be leading to the ILD. So as a PT, we thought that it was very important. I mean, I know these people have got lectures on smoking's bad for you numerous times, but just to really show them, you know, all this scarring, maybe show them a picture, stuff like that, and just make them more aware. And the second one, we were kind of interested to see if this happens in children. And according to Clement et al., interstitial lung disease can happen in children. It is less prevalent and less severe than adults. Um, but it can happen. So if you have a child come in and they're showing these symptoms, don't overlook this disease. It can be very important and um, we are going to be the person seeing the children most often and maybe we can catch it when other people are just thinking it's a cold or something like that. So those three studies we thought were pretty important and relevant to PT with ILD. Some health assessments that can be performed if you are Concern that your patient might have this is obviously looking at their clinical presentation, the shortness of breath, coughing. Then we would listen to their lung sounds. Um, from there, you can do chest imaging with x-rays to see how much scar tissue there actually is. There's pulmonary functional tests, bronchoalveolar lavage, and um, if you're really having gotten a clear di diagnosis, you can do a lung tissue biopsy and that will show how much lung scarring and all of that stuff to confirm the diagnosis. And these are our sources, and we thank you for listening to our little lecture on interstitial lung disease.